Today's vlog will be discussing Woman at Point Zero by Noelle Estadali. This creative nonfiction piece focuses on Firdos, a woman who has been imprisoned for killing a man and is sentenced to death. However, the night before the execution, she invites El Sadali into her cell in order to tell her life story. This story encompasses her fight for freedom and agency throughout her life. However, the passage I will be focusing on is on page 53 of my edition, which looks like this. And, um, and uh, the passage says, I walked down the street just as I had done many times before, but this time it felt different, for I, had not, for I did not have any particular destination. In fact, I had no idea where my steps were leading me. When I looked at the streets, it was as though I was seeing them for the first time. A new world was opening up in front of my eyes. A world for which, which for me, had not, existed, had not existed before. Maybe it had always been there, always existed, but I had never seen it and never realized it had been there all the time. What was it that I had been blind to in its existence all these years? Now it seems as if a third eye had suddenly been split open in my head. I could see crowds of people moving in an uh, incessant flow through the streets, some walking on their legs, others riding in buses and cars. So this passage is striking for a number of reasons, one being that this is her first real taste of freedom and control. She's able to decide where to go and what to do, something that's always been withheld from her. And life, her life was controlled by others in her life. And another reason this is striking is for the recurring motif of sight. This is something seen throughout the text, but especially in this passage with the use of the phrase, so phrases such as, I looked, I've seen them for the first time, uh, in front of my eyes, I had never seen it, third eye, I had been blind, I could see. These phrases are important because they, so they, because she is finally seeing something for the first time. She can see the world that she has wanted to, that she wants to, full of freedom and potential potential for a job, for independence, for a life. This potential is important because she desires something that she can control in her life. However, it has always been, when she's on the cusp of getting something good, such as freedom and control, it gets ripped away from her. This passage is also striking due to the, due to the syntactical setup. The sentences are drawn out and show the weight of, the, of her problems on her by saying, maybe it has always been there always existed, but I'd never seen it. And by placing the blame on herself and saying she was the one who refused to look out at the world, she shifts the weight of the problems of her life onto her shoulders, carrying the burden herself. The structures of the flowing sentences that get longer throughout the paragraph seem to reflect the scene at the center of the passage. Busy streets, crowded with people, and yet all headed in a singular direction towards something new. This passage can be connected to several other passages throughout the text um, that all focus on this same idea of independence and potential and the cusp and being right on the cusp of getting something good and full of potential. This can be seen almost every time um, the circumstances of her life change, such as when um, she moves into her uncle's home, when she gets um, married, when she um, runs out of, runs away from her marriage, and um, when she becomes a sex worker, she's on the cusp of having this thing that she's always dreamed of, potential um, control, freedom, and yet it gets taken away from her. And this passage is one example of her being able to taste the freedom, but not able to get to it. Because she has this freedom, but within the next um, three pages or so, she is married. And she is well-educated and, and almost an idea of a life for herself, and yet she doesn't get to live the life she feels like she should be living.